what's up guys welcome back to the channel my name is Travis and welcome back to another video today we're going to be doing a little bit of an experiment here in the fish room with our geos reef calcium reactor now my plan is to not only test the uh, uh, flow rate but also the pH of the effluent of a single chamber a secondary chamber and even a third chamber just to see if adding those additional chambers really does increase the pH of our effluent before dumping it back into our reef tank now I am going to briefly explain uh, what this setup is, how it works, calcium reactors, all that kind of stuff. Just for those of you who are either new to reefing or new to calcium reactors, you can know what I'm talking about and you can enjoy the video. Now, for those of you who are already using calcium reactors, stick around to see if these additional chambers are actually really worth purchasing and if they do make a difference in the pH. Now, first things first, calcium reactor. How does it work? Quick overview, okay? So we have our main chamber here with whatever media you want to add. I like to use the uh, ARM Extra Course. Um, it's kind of really my only option at the moment given the fact that I can't really get reborn. And uh, yeah, it's been like that for a couple years. But either way, you're gonna fill your main chamber and then you can also add mag chips if you want. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your CO2, however way you want to dose it. You can uh, uh, you know, use a carbon doser, a standard uh, uh, regulator, whatever you want, either way. You're going to get that CO2 into the main chamber. There's going to be a pump that circulates the water being pumped into the chamber, as well as uh, you know circulating that CO2 and all that good stuff, right? So what's going to happen is as you add CO2 to your reactor, it's going to drop the pH in there. When the pH gets dropped to a certain uh, number, for me it's like 6.7, 6.6, 6.7 is pretty good for me um, at the moment with my current um, consumption rate. And uh, what that's going to do is it's going to slowly dissolve the media, releasing calcium alkalinity. And if you added mag chips, it's going to release magnesium, which then you're going to then pump in to your sump. Now, however way you choose to add water, for me personally, I like to use a DC pump here, which then just continuously pumps the water through the reactor back into the sump. Now, a lot of people like to use gate valves or ball valves to finely tune their calcium reactor. For me personally, I don't like doing that because they clog over time. So what I found is if I just leave it wide open, I can just adjust the overall power of the pump with the DC. Given that it is DC, you can adjust the flow. But I also just adjust the pH to make up or for what I have for consumption. So having it wide open has always been really good for me and uh, prevents the clogging. So just keep that in mind uh, when you're setting up. Now, what happens is if you're always uh, running a say a 6.6 .6 pH and you're running a lot of flow uh, or you're dosing a lot depending on your consumption what that can do and the downside of a calcium reactor really the only downside is that it does have a tendency to drop the pH in the main display which um, in most instances isn't a huge deal but a lot of people like to have that closer to 8 pH it's been very common to have like 7.5 7.6 or even lower pH in your reef tank when using a calcium reactor, depending on uh, kind of what the effluent coming out and the flow rate and all that good stuff. So there are other methods of increasing the pH of the effluent once it gets into the tank. One thing I like to do is either have it dumped directly into my um, skimmer, which has worked. You can have it dumped into a refugium, which also works. And uh, you can use uh, this method here as well, uh, secondary chambers. Now. The secondary chambers allows the effluent, which is a, you know, say 6.6 .6 in the main chamber, allows it to go through these additional chambers, giving it a chance to gas off some of that CO2, which in turn will elevate the pH before it actually makes its way back into the sump. That way you don't have such a fluctuation uh, in pH in your main display. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, just rewind and watch it a few times because uh, I'm, I think I covered everything. I don't know. Either way, it's it's good enough to continue on with the video. So the point of this experiment is to see not only what the pH of just coming out of this chamber is gonna be, but when we add a secondary one, what difference does it make, not only in the flow, because we're gonna use the FMM module from Apex, so we're gonna see kind of if, it, if the additional uh, chamber really slows down the flow, but also wanna see what the pH difference is for the second chamber, and then we're gonna add this third chamber, and again, see the flow, and if the pH makes any difference. Now, one thing that I haven't been able to do that I usually do in my calcium reactor setup is I have a coarser media in the main chamber and I try to find some finer ARM kind of like it's almost like sand or crushed coral. I like to put that in my secondary chambers, but I have not been able to find it. And the stuff that I have been able to find is not in the price range that I want to spend for. So um, 
Yeah, so we'll see if the same media that I use in the main chamber and in the secondary chambers really does make a difference. If it doesn't at the end of this video, because we're going to figure this out together, if it doesn't, I will do an updated video once I find some media that I actually want to use that's finer and see if that makes a difference. Because um, the whole purpose of having the finer media in the secondary chambers is it's more surface area, more opportunity for the CO2 to be gassed off, in turn increasing the pH um, you know that's the whole point of it so we'll see if the same media makes a difference if not then there will be an update to that video and it will be in the description if you're watching this a couple years from now so with that five minute and 35 second intro let's go ahead and get started I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the secondary chamber I'm just gonna simply reconnect the uh, FMM to the output of our main chamber and we're gonna test the uh, not only the flow through the apex but we're going to use this pH tester, which, by the way, is not calibrated. So the numbers that we see on here is not going to be it's going to be exactly what's in the calcium reactor. We're just going to be looking at the difference in numbers. Okay, so uh, we're going to test to see what we get in the main chamber. So let me go ahead and uh, get that hooked up. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the flow of the single chamber itself. Looks like five gallons per hour. And you can see by the graph what I've had previously with the secondary chamber, it's already an increase of flow, which makes sense uh, given that it's uh, less resistant. So let's go ahead and move over and test the pH. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab some effluent and test the pH in the original chamber to, uh, to get a baseline. I'm gonna try to fill up the cup to the same level every single time, just to make sure we uh, get some consistency here. So let's go and put this in. Hopefully it will focus. Well, I can tell you right now, the pH probe is definitely off because that is not what I run my reactor at for sure. I run it at 6.65 and 6.7. So uh, the point of this is we, we are just looking at the difference in pH, not necessarily, necessarily the number. So we're looking at 607, 608, 607. We'll be nice, 607 or yeah, 6.07 not 607, 6.07 uh, pH. So let's go ahead and add our secondary chamber, get the media in there, and uh, we'll go ahead and let that run for a little bit and test the pH. Okay, so let's go and grab some fluid for the secondary chamber. Again, we're going to fill it up to about the same level in the cup and go ahead and test and see. So originally we were at 6.07, 6.08. Let's see if the secondary chamber makes any difference in that. And remember, we lost a half a gallon worth of flow, which really isn't a big deal. I'm going to shake this around a little bit, make sure we're good. So we were at 6.07, looks like we went up to 6. Point, I did see 6.2 for a second there. I'll give it a little bit of time to kind of... Settle out. So we definitely did get an increase in pHs, but you know, not a lot. Again, 6.07 is 6. Point, we'll just say 1.4. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not a lot, but it... Uh, it's definitely better than what it was. It will increase your pH overall. It does help. So let's go ahead and add our third chamber and uh, see if that helps. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and fill up our third chamber here, which we're actually going to make our secondary chamber just because I like where the FMM module comes out on the top here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the output of the big chamber. We're gonna come down to the bottom of this secondary chamber out of the top here into the bottom of this one, which will then will come out into the refugium. Now, I'm gonna try not to make a mess uh, just because uh, I have to take the output and connect it to the bottom of this uh, input as quickly as possible because all the pressure is gonna push the water out. So let's go ahead and get our uh, top piece done here. All right, so output. All right, so we're gonna, I'm just gonna do a rough, of where I want it, get a general idea of the length. 
OCD will kick in here. So the bottom of the reactor is right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. We're gonna come in to here. So I'm gonna snip it. And that looks, give it some wiggle room. That looks good. A little extra. All right, so the goal is to pull this and to plug this in as quickly as possible before all the water gets over the place. So we're ready and go. And maybe not. All right, oh, sure. All right, well, it could have been worse. And then we're gonna take the output of the big chamber and put it to the input of this one. So, yes, everything is connected. I'll grab the shop vac, clean all that up. And to recap, we're going from the output here to the input of the secondary chamber, to the output, to the bottom of this one, and then out to the tank. So let's go and fill this thing up with some media. And I'm gonna let it run for a few hours uh, come back, test the pH, and then I'm going to test it tomorrow morning, give you guys an update, and then I'll upload the video. So let's go ahead and get some media into this chamber. What's up everyone? So it's been about three hours since I installed the third chamber on the calcium reactor. I double checked the FMM module, the flow sensor there, and it says 4.7 gallons per hour. Now if you remember when we added the secondary chamber, it was 4.5 gallons per hour. So I don't know how it increased flow with adding more resistance, but uh, yeah, so I will, I will double check that in the morning, just like I'll double check the pH here. But I figured I'd come back early just to see if there really is any noticeable, noticeable difference uh, when just setting it up. So let's go ahead and check the effluent. And again, I'm going to fill it up about halfway, just like the previous test. All right, let's go ahead and check and see what we got going here. I turned off the light in hopes that it would be better, but I think it, yeah, it's, it's not too bad. So I like that number, but it's it's going down. Okay, you can stop. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, so it's a little bit higher than what we had originally, if not the same. Yeah, we were at 6.07, the first chamber, 6.14 for the secondary chamber, and it looks like we're at 6.12 even going down to 1.1 for the third chamber. So again, it might be too early to see if it makes any real difference. Uh, so again, we'll check back in 24 hours and we'll do the same test and then uh, you guys will be watching this video. So uh, with that said, uh, see you in a little bit. Hey, good morning guys. So it's been about 24 hours since we added the third uh, chamber here for the calcium reactor and the flow rate is still bouncing between 4.5 and 5 gallons per hour. So if you guys remember the original gallons per hour with the main chamber alone was about five gallons per hour adding the second one dropped it down by half and then adding this third one really didn't do anything um given maybe the media is just too big and it's not adding any kind of resistance either way we're not really seeing much of a flow difference now when it comes to ph we did test when i initially added this and there really wasn't uh, much of a difference so we figured we, we would wait uh, 24 hours and come back and see if the ph has changed at all so let's go ahead and uh test and see if that, uh, that time really did anything. Okay, so let's go ahead and, oh, the light's on, might not, there we go. All right, so I did see a brief six point, man, you're gonna be a fool, aren't you? I did see a brief 6.2, but uh, it looks like it dropped down to six, so um, I would say, Either my pH probe is on the fritz, which I could probably just get another one and, and double double check and redo this test later on. But um, remember, our first original chamber was 6.07. Um, our secondary chamber was 6.14, and then this one was at 6.20, but it didn't stay very sta didn't stay uh, stable very long. So um, 
might be worth trying to do this test again with a different pH probe or maybe recalibrating one of my apex probes since I do have a PM1 module around here. I could just calibrate one of those probes and get a more accurate reading and do this test again. Uh, always worth a shot. But at the moment, uh, from what I see for number wise, um, I'm not seeing a huge difference with adding a third chamber. Now the secondary chamber did help a little bit, but adding a third chamber, at least with this um, extra coarse media, is not going to really make much of an effect. So what I plan on doing, and I am gonna do a part two to this video, just for the sake of uh, doing <laughs> trying something different. Um, I do have about uh, three or four containers of this extra media here and I have a pretty cool hammer, so I'm probably gonna go through and smash up a bunch of this media and then just fill this chamber up with little pieces of it and then redo the test. So I'm gonna do that today and um, I'll upload the video tomorrow just to see if it does make any difference and maybe I will uh, go out and get another pH Pro, but uh, we did see a, a small increase um, into the 6.20, but nothing nothing really significant, nothing too crazy. So let's... Uh, yeah, let's go and wrap this video up for today, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with part two, uh, and you guys can watch me smash some rocks, caveman style, all right? So I uh, hope you guys have a good day, and I'll see you later. Peace.